Hey, good time to stop in. I've got a great stock to share with you today. This is On Top and Hot. I'm John Zadar, and this is the weekend of May 12th. Now, I'm always looking for stocks that have potential. I'm looking for stocks that can make us some money. Well, I found a stock here that I think has got so much potential, it is going to explode. If. <laughs> now, when I say potential, I mean extreme potential. Think of a hot can of Coca-Cola being shook up and then opened. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, on eruption. This is ticker L-T-R-Y, lottery.com, right? You know who I'm talking about. I don't have to say much more than that. Go into your local convenience store, you'll see their products. All those scratch-off tickets, the machine they're printing up tickets with, that's who they are. They're big, they're everywhere, they're making money, and we're going to go into some of those facts. But what is lottery.com really? A dream machine. They're a factory for generating and inspiring us to dream. People hold a ticket. Once they get that ticket in their hand, they are thinking, what if? What if I won? What would I do with the money? And it's funny. There's a lot of questions you can ask people. Where are you going to be when you grow up? Where are you going to be in five years? What sort of job do you want? They don't have any answers. Ask them what they do with the money if they won. <laughs> Like that, they've got all kinds of answers for you. Now, in the headline to this video, I declared that I think this company is going to run 10x, a thousand percent. Well, to be clear, I'm being conservative. I think it's going to be more than a thousand percent. I think it's going to be more like two to three thousand percent. I see things exploding if, and I said this earlier, if. This is kind of like a Hollywood movie. It starts off beautifully. The happy music, nice colors. We love the characters. We even had a hero enter into the script. But then all of a sudden the music changes and becomes dreadful. The perfect storm rolls in. Dark clouds everywhere. Well, if the company can get through this perfect storm, I think they're going to rip. So let's start off with some general information and then I'm going to get specific. So Lottery.com, she finished the day on Friday at just about 57 cents and just a little over 3% gains. Now this is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Gotta love those penny stocks on the major exchanges. There's benefits to trading them there rather than the OTC. They're free to trade. You don't have to pay anything to get in or get out. OTC, they're getting us on both ends. Not to mention, there's a lot of money being played with upon those major exchanges. The OTC market is hovering just over a billion dollars for the entire OTC market. Over 12,500 companies and that's all they're doing. There's a ton more money up on the major exchanges. So this isn't a good place to play. So you already know what this company does. Let me share some information with you about where they came from and where they're going. Got a lot of great information in this old filing. This is an 8K, came out November of 2021. Now what the heck am I all the way back here for? Because this is when they came on the exchange. It was October of 2021. They did a merger, a business combination with a SPAC called Trident Acquisition Corp. Now a SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company, also known as a blank check company. What that means is they don't have any business. They're not making any revenues. All their job is, is to secure a position on the major exchange, get control of a ticker. Once they do that, they go on a hunt. They're looking for a private company like Lottery.com who is already in business, making money, and wants to go public. Voila, they did it. Once they did it, Lottery.com changed their name from Auto Lotto to Lottery.com, which only makes sense. You see, the company's been in business before they got onto the market and before COVID. And before COVID, they were making an expansion. They were changing how they were doing business. Now, we know their physical business is good. They got thousands of stores selling their physical tickets, but they wanted to digitize it. So they put their website up. Lottery.com is their address. You can go to their website. And they started working with a lot of different digitized uh, avenues, if you will. They got involved with virtual sports and esports. These are, well, for lack of a better term, arcading. This is playing video games. You get thousands of people together in an auditorium watching a few people compete for big money. 
Well, when COVID came along, that all came to a stop. A lot came to a stop. They locked us down. We couldn't even get out of our houses, right? So all the stores were shut. We weren't buying any tickets there. All of the virtual sports and esports, they were all shut down. No advertising for lottery.com. And they had also started working with physical sporting teams, baseball, football, basketball, but that all stopped too. So their revenues got impacted hard, but not as hard as you would think, not as much as they make it sound like. Follow me here. They say, we were an early entrant into the delivery of digitized lottery games with an established and growing user base in the United States and abroad internationally they are in over 40 countries right now and i'll get more into that in a minute we believe that we are well positioned to capitalize on the shift towards esports and the increase of new patrons using our online gaming for example we experienced a 217 percent year-over-year increase in the sale of unique lottery games between 2019 and 2020 Folks, this is bonus information. We're getting insight into areas we normally couldn't see. They just came on the market 2021. They're talking about revenues for 2019 and 2020, which we normally wouldn't be able to see because they were private. Now, they've got some great insightful information down here that I want to share with you. This is a comparative look to 2020 to 2021. Now, we don't get to see 2019 here, but we have a heads up. They said they did 200% gains from 2019 to 2020. Well, 100% gains is doubling your money, right? So 200% gains is tripling your money. So let's just work backwards. We have a number for 2020. This is only covering three months, but we'll work with it just so we have an idea. If we take 1.6 million and divide that by three, we're just a little over 500,000, a little over a half a million. So in 2019, they were doing about a half a million. Did 217% increase up to $1.6 million in 2020. But look at 2021, folks. They jumped to $32 million. That is a 1,900% increase. It is explosive. But wait, that ain't all. Check this out. We're taking a look at total revenues for 2021. She did $68 million. Now stop and think about that. We just got done looking at a three month period ended September, 2021. There's only three months left in the year. So they went from 32 million to 68 million in three months. Holy cow, folks, that's an incredible growth spurt. Look, they went from nothing in 2019 jumping to 7.4 million to 68 million. She is growing exponentially right now. And that is because of the change she did before COVID, digitizing the lottery. Now they're working with a lot of sectors now. They're working with other companies, esports, virtual sports. They're getting affiliates. What they're doing is getting their advertising out there everywhere, on walls, on websites. They're just spreading the word about themselves and they're tapping into the consumer base of all these other organizations. So they're working with U.S. sports betting, U.S. lodging, and a lot more. Now what you see here, the gray area is all physical in-person activity, all the green area is online. Right now their online sales for lottery tickets is 7%, while 93% is still being done in the stores. They expect that to change and change in a hurry. All of this green over here is market they are tapping into. This is their addressable market. They're working with a lot of other companies and organizations that have already built up their own consumer base. And Lottery is just tapping into that consumer base and adding it to their addressable market. Now, as you've probably guessed, the bigger the addressable market, the more potential for making big money. And this company has expanded their addressable market humongously. Now, I got a chart up here of various sectors on the market and what their addressable markets are. Let's take a look at a couple of these. Let's look at global sports betting. Total addressable global market is $85 billion. One of the leaders in that sector is DraftKings. They're getting 25% of the market share and they are currently at $17 billion market cap. 
How about uh, cloud software? That's an up and coming sector growing real fast. They have a addressable market of $157 billion. Salesforce, one of the leaders in the sector, has 12% of that market, and their current market cap is $303 billion. Now let's take a look at Lottery.com. She has a humongous addressable market, $398 billion, and she has only captured less than 1% of that market. It is huge growth potential here. And right now her market cap is only at $700 million. Now folks, I'm excited about this because honestly, I don't see a lot of competition. How many different lottery companies are there out there? I mean, I'm not saying there's none, but I haven't seen any. So if they exist, they must be really small. So that's virtually no competition, which is virtually a monopoly across the United States and over 40 countries around the world. That excites the heck out of me, especially when you see how fast those revenues were growing. So how exactly does this company make all this money? <laughs> yeah, they're selling lottery tickets, but the company actually has multiple revenue streams that they're cashing in on. On the domestic side, they are selling those U.S. lottery tickets online and at thousands of physical locations here in America and abroad. They've also got a new type of sweepstakes called the charitable sweepstakes. Uh, this is where players donate to qualified causes. Then they get entered into a contest to win luxury prizes and a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Sounds unique. Sounds kind of fun. Speaking of fun, they've got another lottery I really like called $1,000 a day. If you win this lottery and they have it every single day, you get $1,000 a day for the rest of your life. That's $365,000 a year for you to live on. That is, if you got yourself an attorney and an accountant to help you protect your money and keep it. If not, IRS probably got about 50% of it, but you still got $180,000 to live on every single year for the rest of your life without ever having to go to work. That's fantastic. Now, they also make money from their business to business partners. This is talking about the API platforms. The best way to explain this is you take an ad from Lottery.com and you put it on someone else's website. When somebody clicks that ad, the API platform sends them over to Lottery.com and sets up a little payment for that company for sending over the customer. Now they get 17 to 33% profit on the domestic side of things. Now they're also doing this internationally. I mean they are selling our US lottery tickets in other countries around the world. And it's totally legal. If they win, they just put the money in their bank. Now they do charge a markup on these tickets. So their gross margins over here are bigger. We're getting 34 to 54% profits now. And of course, we've got businesses doing the same thing over there with their API platforms. Then they tell us that they've got some other things they're working on right now. Lottery.com is developing its own designed and managed lottery games on the blockchain. I don't know how different that's going to be, but it's coming. And then I kind of giggled at this one. Developing subscriber exclusive lottery pools, lottery prediction data, and other premium features. Well, lottery predictive data. How do you predict? A lottery. How do you predict which numbers are going to come up? Is there really a pattern we can see? Are there charts we can follow? Or are we going to have to implement artificial intelligence and quantum computing? Well, if it works, yeah, I'll do that too. And then their last form of revenues comes from them posting their winning numbers. All the places that post the winning numbers, Google, Yahoo, CNN, whoever, they actually have to pay Lottery.com to post the winning numbers because Lottery.com sends them the information through an API. It's a subscription. They make sure the information is there every single day. So Google, Yahoo, all these companies, they're actually paying Lottery.com to post the winning numbers. Isn't it great? So you can see all those bright colors that are coming from the company right now. After COVID, after they digitized their lottery, the revenues are growing astronomically. We went from nothing in 2019 to 68 million in 2021. What's 2022 gonna look like or 2023? 
and that is the problem. That's what we're looking at, folks, missing financials. And you can only be late for so long on the NASDAQ or they'll kick you off. And the company's got their back against the wall right now. And this could go really bad or really good. So what was the relative volume on Friday with all this going on? Well, she jumped up a little bit, going from 474,000 to just under 600,000 shares. Share structure for Lottery.com is not bad. Our outstanding share count is 51 million roughly. Now, they don't tell us what the float is here. You can't get it from the financials. And Google, well, that's just pot luck. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So I really don't know what the float is, except to say it's going to be under 50 million, which isn't a bad float. Financials for Lottery.com. Yeah, we did look at these already. Kind of. We looked at the annuals and they look good, going from zero to seven and a half to 68 million. But the quarterlies, not so good. We're missing filings. We got three of them here in 2021 we're missing and we're missing an annual. Not to mention, we are under a dollar for too long. Now what I find most curious, right here, September 30th, 2021, they're missing it. Well, we just got done looking at an 8K that says three months ended September 30th, 2021. There's the numbers, $32 million, and they've got them all right there. So what's the problem? This is an 8K. 8Ks are for investors to know what's going on. The 10Ks are for FINRA and the SEC. There is no 10K, so it doesn't count until they get it in on a 10K. Now, this has been going on for a while. They have already been warned they have already had their extra time and they didn't make it. So now their backs are against the wall. They are about ready to be delisted. I am in a Form 8K from April 4th. They tell us here that on February 23rd, 2023, the NASDAQ notified Lottery.com of the staff's determination to delist the company's common stock and warrants from the NASDAQ. As a result of the company's failure to comply with NASDAQ's minimum bid price requirement and to file the company's quarterly reports on the Form 10-Q. The company also received an additional notice from NASDAQ indicating the company's annual report hasn't been filed on the 10-K. They need to get these in immediately. Well, every time you get a warning like this and you're about ready to be delisted, the NASDAQ offers you an opportunity to appeal their decision. Now, I see a lot of companies get kicked off the NASDAQ. I have yet to see anybody appeal the decision until now. As previously disclosed, the company has requested a hearing to appeal NASDAQ's delisting determination. So, bouncing over to another 8K that came out May 8th. As previously disclosed on March 23rd, 2023, Lottery.com requested a hearing by the hearing panel of the NASDAQ stock to appeal a delisting determination made by NASDAQ staff on February 23rd. The company proposed to the panel a compliance plan that included tentative schedule to complete the delinquent filings. And this here is it, folks. This is the make or break of the whole situation. On May 8th, the company received a letter from NASDAQ notifying the company that the panel has granted the company's request to continue its listings subject to the following conditions on or before May 15th, 2023. That's tomorrow, folks, Monday. The company shall provide the panel with updated financial projections for 2022 and 2023. Like I said, we don't even know what's going on in those years, including income statements and balance sheets. Also, on or before May 15th, 2023, tomorrow, Monday, the company shall file with the SEC the amended annual report on Form 10-K for the year ended December 2021 and the quarterly report on Form 10-Q for the quarter ending March 31st. That's it, folks. They have got to get these in. Now, it says here, in accordance with the panel's decision, the company has already filed its amended 2021 10K. So they're on the ball. They're doing it. But they've got a serious deadline. One day. Tomorrow. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. How could I? That's why I'm telling you to watch this stock. If they don't do what they said, they're probably going to be delisted and be on the OTC market. 
but I've been reading more information and it doesn't sound like they want or plan on dropping this ball. So I'm expecting a lot of filings to come out tomorrow with a lot of information. And when they show us numbers for 2022 and maybe 2023, this thing could shoot to the moon. It really could folks. Now let me show you some stuff in the news. Looking at that news, our most current piece of news came out at the end of April. Uh, the company recommences ticket operations in Texas. Then at the beginning of April, they announced the appointment of a new independent director and that they had gotten a notice from the NASDAQ. But they have been working on this since the beginning of April. Lottery.com Inc. announces efforts underway to regain compliance. Receipt of staff delisting determination. They got scared. And it was back here in February, February 15th, they got themselves a new CEO. Lottery.com today announced the appointment of Mr. Mark Gustavuson as its new chief executive officer. Not just the CEO, he is also the principal executive officer, as well as the principal financial and accounting officer of the company until they find replacements. Now, this is a good man to have at the helm. He's got a lot of experience. He's already taken over companies before, built them up, reorganized them, and then returned them in better condition than when he found them. He's been co-founder of three companies, which means he helped create the company from birth, from the very start. He has got a lot of credibility, and I think he can help this company. I don't know what's going on with the old management. I know they're gone now. They pushed them all out. They were doing a good job when it came to finances. Yeah, they were making lots of money, but they weren't doing anything about the financials. Where's our 10Ks and 10Qs? We needed those and they didn't give them to us. And he sounds like he's very interested in getting this ship back in the water, even keel. Now they tell us down here, Mr. Gustavuson said, I am excited about the opportunities that lie ahead for Lottery.com and I am honored to be a part of this world-class team. I believe that the company stands at a promising new juncture. I believe our core focus must be to build out operational capacity and drive revenue opportunities alongside our plans to restart and grow our core business. With my tech experience in, among other things, the mobile gaming, fiber optics, and mixed and virtual reality technologies, I am confident that I may further increase Lotteries.com's profile as a leading technology company that transforms how, where, and when lotteries are played. Now, personally, I think Mark has been brought in to fix things. I don't know if he's going to be a permanent member of the management, but I do believe he's here to make things right, and I think he can do it. He's done it before. He's taken over a company temporarily, reorganized it, strengthened it, and then gave it back to management. So that very well could be what he's up to here. And I have faith in the man, and tomorrow will be the telltale signs. I definitely want to see the filings, just the filings themselves so that they don't get delisted. But I want to get into those filings. I want to see how much money they are producing now. Whew, I'm excited here. I am not the only one who's excited about this though. I found this over here at Google, a price target, $14. And this is current. They said the last price was 57 cents, which is what it is right now. So this analyst believes that this can go up to $14 from 57 cents, which is a gain of 2,300%. As I said, folks, this could easily do 10 times. It might do 20 times, and it's not out of the question to do 30 times, 3,000% gains. Now, I'm not saying count on that. I'm saying watch the stock. You don't want to miss it if it happens. The company could bring out some huge revenues numbers in these financials, which could be very exciting. Get a front row seat. Speaking of a front row seat, you want to see what I got on the charts? Of course you do. Come on. Very interesting chart. This is ticker LTRY, lottery.com. And we're going to be doing all of our charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. So I've got this opened up to a three-year, one-week chart. Every bar on this chart represents an entire week of trading. And it's a little weird. I don't completely understand this chart. Back here is when the SPAC was $10.00. And normally you see it jump when they close a deal because a SPAC shares sell for $10 and they're only worth 
$10 until they consummate and close a deal. Not talking about it, not thinking about it. It has to be consummated, completed, done. Well, they didn't close the deal at Lottery.com until right there, October 2021. Well, this is October 2020. Why is it running? For a year, it was running. I don't see SPACs do this. When news comes out, it's not the shares that move. It's normally the warrant because you're only going to get $10 for the share. So nobody really bids the shares. Well, this one was being bid like crazy, up to $17. Now, if somebody bought in for $17 right there and the company failed to close this deal, he'd have only got $10 back for every share he bought at 17 bucks. That's why you normally don't see any trading, but we got a full year of trading here, hot trading, before she closed her deal. And then after she closed it, she fell, and she fell hard. From that high bubble to that low bubble of 15 cents. And look at all the volume that has been coming in. Let's jump on down to that six month, four hour view. So there's that low bubble of 15 cents. Our 200-day SMA was barreling down, rolled across that low bubble, started pushing up. She did have a roll down right there, but she is now pushing back up as that 50-day SMA is crossing the 200 right there. We've got a lot of strength. One, two, three, all three of the SMAs, 9, 20, and 50, just crossed the 200. Volume is starting to get stronger right now. Our oscillators, uh, the PPO looks strong. The MACD had a crossover, but it looks like it's trying to come back up. And our RSI is just under 55, which is the lowest I really like to see in RSI. 20-day, one-hour view. She's starting her uphill trend there, folks. Here's your low bubble now, 34 cents. She is on top of her 200. She comes under it just a little bit, but she bounces hard. When she doesn't want to go down, she pushes up very strong. She's rolling and rolling. Here she goes under that 200, and now she's starting to climb. She's graduated off of the 200, jumped up onto the 50. The price is getting lighter now, and it looks like she's trying to make a move to the 20, which would be outstanding. Our oscillators are all starting to turn up right now. Our PPO and our MACD have both had crossovers pushing up, and our RSI is still cool at 53, but it is pushing up. Five day, five minute. So we've got a steady uptrend here, not real strong. She fell on Friday. It's getting close, and I don't know if people caught the news because this is exciting, folks, to have all these filings come out in one day. Somebody's been busy in the office, and the potential of the information that's going to be in those filings. I'm telling you, I'm excited. I'm going to be watching tomorrow. I'm going to be watching to see those filings come out. So she came deep. She fell here from about 54 cents down to 49 cents, lost a nickel there, and she's come back up, took a bounce off of her 20 and put herself right back up on top of the 200. She's looking good, and with the right catalyst, she could rip, and you know we've got the right catalyst. However, it is a coin toss right now. We are counting on the company doing everything that they said, and they're counting on it too. I can guarantee you they do not want to come off of the NASDAQ. It costs $75,000 a year to get up onto the NASDAQ, and I know they don't want to pay that again. And after being on the NASDAQ, who wants to be on the OTC? Now, folks, I didn't cover everything with this company. I never do. Don't have enough time. So please do some more due diligence. I like what I'm seeing with this company, and I am revved up for tomorrow. One day. Now, if those filings come out, we have good news. You better be watching this stock Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as well. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-